Serenity is a 2005 science fiction film written and directed by Joss Whedon. It is set in the universe of the cancelled Fox science fiction television series Firefly, taking place a few months after the events of the final episode. Like the television series that spawned it, Serenity is a science fiction western using elements of both genres. The film was released in the U.S. on September 30th, 2005. Set 500 years in the future, Serenity is the story of a captain and crew of a transport and cargo ship. Their lives of petty crimes are interrupted by a psychic passenger who carries a dangerous secret. Joss Wheaton, the Oscar and Emmy-nominated writer and director responsible for the worldwide phenomena Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Angel, now applies his trademark compassion and wit to a small band of galactic outcasts 500 years in the future in his feature film directorial debut, Serenity. The resources of Earth have been depleted. Humanity has moved to another star system and terraformed many of the other planets. All the planets are controlled by the supposedly peace-loving but actually authoritarian alliance. A frontier justice still holds up further away from the core planets where outlaws like the crew of Serenity can scrape out a living if they keep clear of the Alliance forces and the Reavers. Savage and cannibalistic humans who dwell beyond the outer planets and raid the Alliance worlds around them. The film opens up with Simon Tam in the process of breaking his sister River out of an Alliance facility where she is being experimented upon. After the pair escape the ship, the adventure is revealed to be a recording being viewed by the operative an Alliance agent working on behalf of the Parliament with unspecified but clearly very great authority and responsibility. After a brief discussion between the operative and Dr. Mathis in charge of the Alliance facility, the operative accuses the doctor of allowing vital government information to fall into dangerous hands, alluding to River's psychic gleaning of Alliance officers who monitored her in prison. The operative quickly kills the doctor's bodyguards with an archaic sword. He prevents the doctor's attempts to flee by paralyzing him with pressure point blows to the side of his torso above his waistline. The operative lets him fall on the sword, which is standing upright, with its hilt planted firmly on the floor. As the operative kneels beside it, he orders an assistant to recover the mental conditioning triggers from the database as Dr. Mathis dies, and implies that he is about to begin searching for the Tam siblings. Sometime later, Serenity is on the way to another job. However, this ship is badly in need of repair and the primary buffer panel comes loose from the ship's bow in the heat of atmospheric re-entry. In order to earn her continued passage, River accompanies Captain Malcolm Reynolds, Jane, and Zoe on a mission to rob a bank in order to steal the payroll of an outer planet security company financed by the Alliance, knowing the crime will likely never be reported. After a rough landing during which pieces of the ship fall off, the crew pulls off the robbery and narrowly avoids capture by a Reaver landing party because River is able to telepathically sense their approach. Mel has the people in the bank protect themselves by hiding in the vault, ordering them not to emerge as long as they have air. During the getaway, a man from the bank begs Mel to take him with him, but the captain refuses as there's no room on the mule. The Reavers catch him as the mule leaves, but Mal shoots the man dead to save him from a painful fate. After a tense chase between the crew's transport and a Reaver ship, Wash, the ship's pilot, and Zoe's husband, brings the ship to intercept the crew's surface vehicle at the last second, saving the crew from a grisly fate. As the crew gathers their belongings, they find they brought a single Reaver aboard, and he is quickly shot dead. Simon, now the crew's doctor, angrily reacts to the captain's willingness to put his younger sister in such danger and decides that they should leave once they reach Beaumont, a planet they were on their way to in the episode R. Mrs. Reynolds. The crew plans to hand over the loot to their clients. Mal agrees, tiring of Simon's attitude towards him in regards to River. Zoe discusses with Mal the decision to abandon the man to the Reavers and tells him that if they dump the loot, there would have been enough room on the mule. Mal responds that the ship is falling apart and they're heading towards dire straits since not many people want to do business with them. And if they fail to do this job, might never find another one. Zoe agrees with what Mal says but reminds him they never abandoned anyone during the war. And Mal responds grimly, that might be the reason they lost. The crew arrive at Beaumont and the Tams sadly disembark. 
although it's clear River doesn't want to leave, but feels that their remaining isn't safe. They rejoin the crew at a bar. While entering, Kaylee bemoans the fact that Simon never noticed her obvious signals and is angry at Mel for not doing more to make them feel more welcome on the ship. Mel harshly tells her that they were always going to leave and maybe Simon didn't have any feelings for her. Mel and Jane then meet up with their clients, Fanti and Mingo Rample, with their cut of the loot. But a disagreement arises with the brothers, who want a larger share. After staring transfixed at an advertisement for fruity oat bars, River suddenly attacks the bar's patrons. Despite being a 90-pound girl, she manages to beat up everyone without so much of a scratch on herself, including incapacitating Jane. Mal rushes to retrieve his gun from the holding area, and gets it just as River points another gun on him. River is just about to shoot the captain when Simon arrives, and shouts a phrase in Russian, causing her to fall asleep. Simon explains to the captain that during their captivity by the Alliance, she was trained and conditioned to become an assassin. The only thing short of death that can stop her once the conditioning has been triggered is the safe word he uttered. Despite knowledge of this new danger and his fury at not being told about the possibility of carrying a potential living weapon, the captain allows Simon and River to continue traveling on Serenity. The crew contacts Mr. Universe, a reclusive techno-geek who dwells with his robotic wife on a planet surrounded by an opaque ion cloud. After watching the security camera footage of the bar on Beaumont, Mr. Universe discovers that River's outbursts were triggered by a subliminal message in a seemingly harmless cartoon advertisement that had been broadcast all over the Alliance during the previous weeks. He tells the crew before the attack, River whispered the name, Miranda. He also notes that the incident was not officially reported and that the footage itself was harder to get a hold of than it should have been. What's more, it's been viewed by someone else with high Alliance clearance. Fearing Alliance pursuit, the crew takes refuge in the Haven Mining Colony with Shepard Book, a shepherd who once traveled with Serenity's crew. Book warns Mel that the Alliance agents pursuing River is likely to be an operative, and very dangerous. He then wonders why he took Simon and River back aboard, when he not only had the opportunity to leave them behind, but every reason to. Book tells him that it is not in him to just abandon people, and that he needs some belief, not necessarily in God, but just to believe in something. Shortly thereafter, the captain receives a call from Inara, another former passenger who now resides in a companion training house. Their conversation is awkward but pleasant enough, with no arguing, leading Mal and Zoe to conclude that it's a trap, but they decide to visit Inara anyway as she is clearly someone in danger. Mal's fears are realized. Anara is being manipulated by the ruthless and nameless Alliance operative. The operative offers to let the captain go on his way if he turns River over to him. But thanks to Anara's quick thinking, she and the captain escape the operative and return to Serenity, which takes off undetected. Another of River's outbursts shows the crew the meaning of Miranda, it is the name of an Outer Rim planet, which had once been inhabited, but was thought to be wiped out in a terraforming accident. River had subconsciously learned something mysterious about the planet when she came in telepathic contact with a member of the Alliance Parliament during her training. Traveling to Miranda to learn more would require crossing Reaver territory, which the crew members agree would be suicidal. So instead, Serenity returns to Haven and Shepard Book. On arrival, the crew discovers that the outpost had been ravaged by the Alliance forces, its inhabitants killed. Mal finds Book, who has shot down the attacking ship, mortally wounded. He dies in Mal's arms. Several other outposts that had harbored Serenity in the past had also been destroyed. Captain Reynolds receives a message from the operative, claiming responsibility and promising more of the same until River is turned over. Mal comes out and orders Serenity to be remodeled to look like a Reaver ship, which involves painting and mutilating the hull, making dangerous modifications to the engine to leak radiation, and arming the weaponless cargo vessel with the settlers' cannon, and tying the bodies of the dead settlers to the prow. Everyone protests, but Mal furiously informs them that they can either do what he says or leave the ship now, 
and he is ready to shoot anyone who tries to stop him. Serenity, now painted red and looking more menacing, leaves for Miranda. Sneaking through a fleet of Reaver vessels, the ship finally reaches the other side without incident. Upon reaching Miranda, the crew discovers a normal, terraformed planet with a completely habitable Earth-like environment, but the sprawling cities that dot the planet's surface are empty. Inside the buildings and cars are badly decomposed corpses, without apparent cause of death. There are no signs of violence or disease. It is as if the people simply lay down and died. The crew discover a log recorded by an Alliance search and rescue team after the disaster. According to the log, the Alliance administered the chemical substance G23 Paxilon Hydrochloride, or simply Pax, to the populace. It was supposed to suppress aggression and thus render the planet free of violence. An unfortunate side effect was that the population had stopped working, eating, or indeed caring about anything. They simply gave up on life and died in their newfound non-aggressive state. However, approximately one-tenth of the population, some 30,000 persons, had the opposite reaction to the drug, becoming extremely aggressive and mentally unstable. They mutilated their own bodies and became cannibalistic. A group of them raped, killed, and ate the researchers, one such attack even being recorded on video. The crew realizes that these settlers became the Reavers, and thus the Alliance was responsible for the creation of this menace. River throws up after the video ended. However, shedding the weight of the secret she's been carrying helps her mental state a lot. Everyone is sickened by this revelation, but none so more than Mel. This was exactly the sort of thing the brown coats fought to prevent. The Alliance's belief that they can make people better, that everyone must conform to them, regardless of the cost or consequence, and trample on self-determination. For the first time in years, Mal is moved by something greater than himself, a belief, something he thought he had lost in the Battle of Serenity Valley. The plan is to reveal this secret to all worlds by using the transmitter equipment belonging to Mr. Universe. They contact him and he invites the crew to use the transmitter, but unfortunately the operative is already waiting at Mr. Universe's headquarters, along with the Alliance fleet. He runs his blade through Mr. Universe and orders the equipment destroyed. Serenity slowly heads back through Reaver territory. However, just when she's about to leave, Mel uses the turrets to open fire upon a Reaver ship. This provokes all the Reavers present and they give chase. With the Alliance fleet in orbit of Mr. Universe's planet, the operative waits to shoot Serenity out of the sky. When the ship emerges, he sneers that the ship isn't even changing course, only to watch dozens of Reaver ships follow it. There is a massive battle between the Alliance fleet and the Reaver fleet. As Wash steers Serenity towards the planet, with both the Alliance and the Reavers trying to destroy them, as well as each other. During the attack, the operative ship is destroyed, but he flees the battle in an escape pod and follows the crew to the surface. Serenity manages to make it through the fireflight and heads into the atmosphere, but is followed by a Reaver ship, which fires an electromagnetic pulse at them, disabling power and causing the ship to start a free fall from the sky. As the crew stumble to buckle themselves in, Wash is able to restore emergency power at the last minute to level their descent. However, Serenity is moving with far too momentum and crashes into the ground, causing massive damage. After skidding along the landing strip, Serenity finally stops, but has nearly been torn apart in the process, including having one of its engines torn off. As everyone begins to relax, a Reaver Harpoon suddenly smashes through the window, impaling Wash, who dies instantly. Mal pulls Zoe away from Wash's dead body, barely saving her from another harpoon fired by the Reavers into the cockpit. Fleeing the wrecked Serenity to continue their assumed mission of getting the word out about Miranda, the crew decides to set up a last stand in a small corridor to hold off the Reavers and give Mal the time he needs to make his way to Mr. Universe and transmit the message. Kaylee suddenly realizes that Wash is missing and Zoe simply responds, emotionless, that Wash isn't coming. There's no time to mourn, and the crew is forced to simply continue the work. Mal arrives to find Mr. Universe has been killed, 
However, before he died, he was able to leave a pre-recorded message with his robotic wife, which informs Mel that there is a secondary transmitter in another area of the complex. Meanwhile, the crew is losing ground to the Reavers and is forced to retreat. Zoe and Kaylee are injured. The operative arrives on the planet and runs into the robotic wife, who repeats the message, informing him where the second transmitter is. The crew tries to close the blast door, but it does not close completely. This buys them some time, but when Simon, the doctor, is hit by a stray bullet, there is no one to tend to the injured. He tells them he needs his medical bag, which he left on the other side of the door. River goes to her injured brother's side and tells them that he's always taking care of her, and now it's her turn to take care of him. She then dives through the gap in the blast door and throws the medical kit back through and closes the door to protect the crew before being swarmed by Reavers. Mal reaches the second transmitter and finds that it is inconveniently located on a platform surrounded by a large drop. He is about to attempt to reach the platform when the operative shows up. They have a standoff which results in Mal being quicker on the draw and shooting the stun gun out of the operative's hand. Mal then attempts to reach the transmitter, but the operative follows him. A fight begins between the two men, with the operative employing the same pressure point that killed the Alliance doctor at the opening of the film. However, in Mel's case, that particular nerve cluster fell victim to a piece of shrapnel during the war, and Mel had it removed. Mal doesn't kill the operative, and instead disables him with a similar move, and leaves him trussed up to watch the recording from Miranda. Returning to the crew, he is informed that River was trapped on the other side of the blast door with the Reavers presumed killed. The door opens a moment later to reveal River, standing with her head bowed around a room full of dead Reavers. After a moment, Alliance troops blow the wall behind her and enter, but instead of giving permission to shoot her, the operative, having seen the video from Miranda, orders the squad to stand down. After the crew buries the bodies of their friends Mr. Universe, Shepard Book, and Wash on Haven, the crew patch up Serenity in a repair yard on the planet Persephone, arranged for by the operative. Just as they are about ready to leave, the operative arrives to tell Mal and the Tams that they are no longer actively hunted by the Alliance, and their regime has been weakened, and warns that they will not simply forgive the crew for getting the word out. Mal warns the operative that he'll kill him if he ever encounters each other again. But the operative, having abandoned the Alliance, promises they won't. In the payoff to the subplot from both the series and the film, Simon and Kaylee finally make love. Zoe tells Mal that she's tore up plenty, but she'll fly true, ostensibly referring to the ship, but also describing her own state. Mal then heads to the cockpit and meets with Inara, and asks if she's ready to disembark, and Inara admits with a smile that she doesn't know. Mal tells her that's a good answer and takes his seat at the helm with his new co-pilot, River. He is surprised when she already shows aptitude for piloting, but tells her it's not knowledge or experience that keeps a ship in the air or makes her a home. It's love. With that, the two take serenity, now restored to her former glory, into the air and back out into space. The final shot shows the ship flying off triumphantly until a random piece of metal flies off from the back of the ship and hits the camera, prompting the movie's final line. What was that? <laughs>